And that actually brings up another question was Gary Corbin asked, um, he said, no better time than now, a question mark with the, even with the 7% interest rates. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, so you're going to be offering less in 2023 than you offered in 2022. And I've got mm -hmm. a couple of deals where I made an offer about a year ago. Mm -hmm. In my underwriting, I had 3.5% interest rate because I had just gotten a loan from Old National Bank in Ann Arbor for 3.5% interest rate. Right. Well, now, uh, now uh, Old National is at six and a quarter. So okay. it, it, was it was only at 7% for about two weeks. It's down okay. all the way. It's down all the way down to uh, six and a quarter. And actually, Old National said that if the building is class A, they can get down to all the way to 5.85 right now. So, oh, wow. so don't get me wrong. It was up to seven percent there for a minute, but it's it's yeah. way back, it's way back down again already. So, okay. so, but again, there, again though, even with six point two five, there is a huge difference in the cost of debt between three point five and six point two five, and so that means you have to offer less than you did a year ago. And the seller right. says, Stuart, what are you talking about? Real estate has gone up in value in the past year. And what I, mm -hmm. what I say to my sellers is, uh, look at my math. You know, I'll show it to you. Um, boy, yep. it's, it's not true because the buyer, a buyer with 3.5% interest rate can pay a million, but with 6.25, you can only pay 850,000 or, you know, whatever the math works out. So you gotta be careful about that. But yeah, I, I, yes. uh, I I'm not concerned about six six point two five or five point nine five i was i was concerned about seven that was getting pretty difficult there for a minute yeah and i i think between five and six percent um even a little bit more than six percent i think that's where we need to stabilize and, and keep because a lot of people don't realize that until for the you know for the past ex with the exception of the past couple of years you know for the past like say two or three years, interest rates have been at like 6% or above, you know? So yeah, so my first deal I ever did uh, in 2002 was at 5.25% fixed for five years. And yeah. then when, when it got to the fifth year, I didn't really know what I was doing. I kind of messed it up a little bit. I, I'd never had a loan expire before. So it went gotcha. to floating. It went from 5.25 to floating. So I get a letter in the mail saying, Hey, your interest rate's 5.25. The next month I get a letter in the mail saying it's 5.5. Then I get a letter in the mail saying it's 5.75. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do, you know? Um, yeah. So, and so then I contacted my banker. This was back in 2007, you know, when I was like 24 years old. I said, hey, what do I do? He said, oh, we just got to refinance again on a five year. And we got it back down to like 5.25 again, I think. Um, right. So yeah, I, I'm not I think that's I think that's where we're going to stabilize, to be honest. So yeah. you know, do I think that we'll come down eventually? Maybe in a few years. I, I honestly think we're going to be in the fives, fives and sixes for for it's going to stabilize right around there. So yeah, and I, um, and I think you'll be I think you'll be fine investing in mid size apartment buildings uh, at mm -hmm. five five and a half as long as the seller uh, is looking at the same numbers you are. You know, if, he, if he's looking at 20, 20 numbers, 3.6% interest rate, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. But remember, no one's going to be able to pay more than you can for the building in, in these mid-size apartment buildings. Now, if you go right. out and try to buy, if you go out and try to buy a 250 unit apartment building, that's where that's where it's very challenging. You might be you might have a five interest rate, but the other mm -hmm. buyer might have a three because he's got different type of money. He's got Chinese money or insurance <laughs> money or uh new york yeah. money. and so that and when you get to that level it's it's harder to compete um against the big guys but on mid-size apartment buildings 20 units 30 units everyone's gonna have the same interest rate they're gonna all be calling the same banks and so you just gotta offer what makes sense for you don't get too aggressive yeah so um is it uh jim wellington asked uh what are your thoughts on multifamily um valuations uh, many sellers have very high expectations on value particularly if they're locked in a three to four interest rate three four percent interest rates uh, a buyer now isn't getting that rate and most likely can't pay the price that reflects debt 
debt service at as much lower interest rates or current owners. So uh, do you anticipate a some type of price correction in multifamily? Yeah, so the, the person I'm gonna be buying from in 2023 is a, a mom and pop seller. They've owned the property for a long time. They wanna retire and their kids want nothing to do with it. Also, they realize that they have not been reinvesting in this property. And so they've got some major items that they need to invest in. Maybe the city's cracking down on them, maybe their bank's cracking down on them. They get they have to replace the roof or the windows or the parking lot. Something that's gonna cost a hundred grand. Yep. You know, yeah. and, and these folks haven't been aggressive on their rent increases. So these buildings aren't cash flowing like they should, even though the debt is very low. They, they, right. they're, and when they're faced with an improvement that's going to cost 100 grand or maybe even two. So there's going to be 200 grand. You got roof and a parking lot. That's going to yeah. be a, a seller. And then the third thing, it's someone whose debt's expiring in 2023. Uh, so I, that just happened to me. I should have refinanced a loan six months ago, but I was like, yeah, it doesn't expire for another six months. I got, I'm busy. I'm buying these other properties. Now I have to yeah. refinance it. I have to refinance it next month. <clears throat> and I'm going, I'm going from a 4.4 to a six. And oh. luck, luckily, you know, luckily I've been managing the property pretty well. It's going to cash flow at a 4.4 or a six. So I'm going to be fine, but there's going to be some people that they're not going to be fine. They haven't been managing the property aggressively enough. It doesn't work at a six and they're going to sell. So the, the, uh, we just bought a 20 unit in Ypsilanti where all, th all three of those things were true at the same time. Mom and yep. pop seller that's getting older. The city's cracking down saying, Hey, you know, we, two years ago, we told you, you had to replace this parking lot. You didn't, now yep. you definitely gonna have to and then three the debt was expiring and so we we bought the 20 unit for a good price so you're you're gonna be looking for that type of seller um you're definitely not gonna buy a, a nice property class b or class a from a guy who's got three percent interest rate in 2023 it's not gonna work um so so have you dealt with uh any properties that are gonna be I, especially in the multifamily where you want to do like a seller finance where I, uh, you know, they have a great interest rate and they just want nothing to do with the property. It's a mom and pop, like you said, and they're looking to retire and they haven't put much money into it. And they're like, well, you have this great interest rate. Let me either take over your loan and give you a partial seller finance or do a full seller finance. Have you done anything yeah. like that? Yeah, definitely. So uh, we just bought an office building in Lansing, 16,000 square feet, uh, mm -hmm. where the, the heating and cooling system died. And so now this guy's got no heat in his building and he's got tenants. And I said, look, the building's not financeable right now, uh, but I'll buy it on a land contract. And so mm -hmm. I bought a I bought a 16,000 square foot office building for $20,000 down. Um, uh, on a land contract, we've now put mm -hmm. in a new uh, one hundred and sixty thousand dollar heating and cooling system. We're gonna mm -hmm. do some, we're gonna do some uh, lease up uh, improvements and get this building lease back up, and then we're gonna do a cash out uh, refinance on the building. And so that gotcha. that's an example that's an example of uh, seller financing. And then on uh, loan assumptions, yeah, some loans are very attractive <laughs> to assume right now because of the mm -hmm. low interest. Okay, awesome. So I had another one, uh, another question on here from Earl Harris, and I can't post it on here because it didn't come through here for some reason. But he said, uh, what would be your recommendations or advice to someone starting out in trying to source uh, potential deals? And I think we kind of talked a little bit about it, but he probably came in late. Uh, so I just let me reiterate a little bit of that is that you mainly have deals just straight come to you is that right well the answer to that question is you want to meet sellers of real estate right you're a buyer of real gotcha. estate you want to meet sellers of real estate so how, how do you meet sellers of real estate first of all always be networking secondly yep. reach out to the people that deal with sellers of real estate so that's wholesalers mm -hmm. real estate agents banks insurance companies, title companies, contractors. Oh my gosh, contractors. Let me tell yes. you about that. 
So, so I hired, I hired a guy to trash out a apartment for me. Mm -hmm. And, and he said, he's, and I said, Hey, if you, if you're ever trashing out uh, an apartment on someone else's property and you think they might sell, call me. And one week later, he said, Stuart, I don't know exactly what to do right now, but I got this guy named Milo. He owns a 24 unit in Romulus and he let it slip that this is the last job he's going to hire me to do because he's going to sell the building. So he was like, Hey, thanks for trashing out my apartment. This is the last thing you're going to do for me. I'm going to sell the building. I was like, give me Milo's phone number. And within 24 <laughs> hours, within, within 24 hours, I'm meeting with Milo in his garage. Uh, he's smoking cigarettes like three at a time. And I'm there, you know, just talking to this guy. He's like 70 years old. And, and we struck a deal for a 24 unit in Romulus right, right then and there. And that was from a contractor. So if you're, if you're a buyer of real estate, you want to network with sellers of real estate. And and, yeah. and just always be networking. So that's your that's your banks, your insurance companies, your wholesalers, your real estate agents, your contractors, and just make it known. Shout from the rooftops that you're a buyer of uh, real estate, and the deals will trickle in in the beginning. And then once you start buying, people will be like, "Oh, this guy's serious," and then they'll bring you more deals. Just like you're a wholesaler, right? You yeah. don't spend a lot of time with people that you know that are not serious. You spend the most oh, time with people that you know are serious, repeat buyers, cash buyers. And so you want to develop a relationship of seriousness, uh, you know. Exactly. And, you know, I it's funny because when I have a cash buyer that I don't deal with very often, I've never dealt with before, I have a earnest money deposit for him versus a earnest money deposit for uh, somebody who's closed multiple deals with me. Right. You know, so it's it's a safety it's, mechanism it's, it's relationships yep yeah 100 sure. so uh yeah that is i mean get out there i that's basically the same answer i have is, is get out there get to know people and shout from the rooftops from everybody family members <clears throat> i you know for you, you're out there getting your oil change and and you're just shooting the shit with somebody telling you buy real estate you never oh, know what happens. You know, it was, you know, it was so funny is, uh, I, I was at, I went to the Michigan, Michigan state basketball game this Saturday. And my friend wow. said, let's go to the student bar called the Riv, you know, and, and I showed up in my Michigan gear and some guy <laughs> came up to me and started ripping on me. Cause I was wearing Michigan gear in the, in the enemy territory. Yep. And then he was like, where are you from anyway? And I was like, I'm from Ypsilanti. He said, Oh my God, I, I, I just got a job in Ypsilanti. And my boss uh, he owns this and owns that. And I'm like, oh, let me get a lunch with this guy. And so like, just, you know, just talk, just communicate, yeah. networking, meet people. And it just, it, it comes together, you know? Most definitely. Yep. So, yeah, so on that, it's, you know, relationship, that's kind of how, like, I've done some of my easiest deals that way. And, you know, I've gotten some really hard deals, you know, by cold calling, you know, so, and, you know, you never know what happens, um, you know, and kind of going from that. But now going to what you have now, um, you know, going to what you have now, you have obviously mul a lot of multifamilies and a, a lot of different businesses. So what other businesses do you have right now that's going on? And uh, how did you, for instance, we know that you have a um, property management company. Uh, so tell me a little bit about that and how you got started in, in property management. <clears throat> yeah, so in, in property management, uh, people would call all the time saying, hey, Stuart, I see that you're doing real estate and doing pretty well. Will you manage my property? And I always said, no, I've got to focus on uh, my things. But then I started hiring some staff to manage my properties. And I realized it would be great if I could get some additional revenue to pay these people more to work for me more full time if I managed right. more. And that's how we started building the business. Uh, okay. Right now, we manage, uh, we manage about 500 properties uh, in 65 cities around Metro Detroit. And, you know, about 400 of them are owned by other people, but that allows me to have a staff of 65 uh, employees that benefit my properties and our clients' properties. And it's just right. a really robust, 
really robust staff. That's the, that's the reason we started the property management company. And then we also help people with real estate investments. So I'm not here to help you buy and sell real estate, but if you want to invest in real estate with me, you can go to BealCapital.com and uh, you can invest in some of our smaller deals uh, as a non-accredited investor, or if you are an accredited investor, you can invest in our real estate syndications, um, which mm -hmm. which uh, are the, the, the deal mechanism we use to go after the bigger properties, the 100 unit you know properties.